So today we decided to come over here to Alabama and do a pit bounce at a place that cavers call Moses' Tomb. It's a 230 foot deep pit here and we're going to rig a rope and rappel down it and climb back out and take you guys along with us. So come along and follow and like and subscribe for more caving content here in the heart of TAG. So cavers actually own this property and they've always allowed cavers to visit here. They actually do keep a log book right here. So I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna sign it. The Moses' tomb registered. like the last time people signed it were during the, the cave-in. So something else really neat on the property here is an old bus. It's been here for as long as cavers have been coming here. Looks like somebody's been clearing out some brush around the, around the bus. From my understanding, cavers actually used to camp inside of this bus way back in the day. All right, here we go, starting up the trail to the cave. So this trail is usually pretty overgrown. And if you try to come here in the summer, you'll get ate up with ticks. So I don't know, maybe 10 years ago or less, there was a tornado that came through this area and took down a bunch of trees and then a couple years after that, a wildfire hit this area. So it's been pretty overgrown the last few years. So this time of year in the fall is a great time to visit this cave because the trail isn't as overgrown. So you can actually still see a lot of evidence from the uh, forest fire that was out here. There's another tree right there. So here's a really cool fossil. It looks like an old horn coral fossil. It's in this limestone just along the trail here. We finally made it up here to the cave. It's a deep, dark hole, 230 feet straight down. So cavers used to rig to this tree here, but it was destroyed during the tornadoes. But they would rig a rope, and it would go across this old cedar tree here, which would protect the rope a little bit. Um, this old cedar tree has been here for 20 plus years. You can see there's some grooves in it from all the ropes over the years where people have repelled here. But now what we do is there's a bolt on this rock and then there's a second bolt here that we rigged to to redirect it to get down into the pit.
Going to use a full size rack today since it's a deep pit. Welcome back to 220. So what we're using to get down into the pit is called a rappel rack and it has six bars on it and basically it uses friction to control your speed as you go down the pit. So when Jason rigs in here we'll show you how you rig in the rappel rack and how we get down. Now as far as getting out of the pit we have what's called a frog climbing system. So you have an ascender right here on your harness and there are little teeth right here. So when you weight the rope on this, the teeth actually grip into the rope and allow you to go up. You use these foot loops connected to an upper ascender and that's how we climb the rope. So when we get down to the bottom, we'll show you a little bit more about that as well when we start on our way out. And then of course there's our rope. That's a 300 foot, 10 millimeter in diameter rope. In the end of the rope so you don't repel off the end of it. So you always do that for safety. Not goes in the end. Even though we know we have enough rope, you still always do it. Don't need to be that long. No, what, maybe 10 foot or so? So we're putting a little bit of a pigtail on the end of the rope. A pigtail is a shorter rope because we're going to tandem climb out of this pit today and it'll just help whichever one of us decides to be on top to get out. So we're going to rig to this bolt here via a figure eight and a carabiner. And now we're going to rig another figure eight to this carabiner. So that way we have have it rigged in two spots for safety. You wouldn't ever want to just rig to the one bolt for safety reasons in case that bolt were to fail. So that's why we rig to two bolts. If there wasn't two bolts here, you could rig to a tree, but you always want to have it backed up to something just for safety reasons in case of failure. So now we're going to drop the end of the rope, which we've got our knot in, down into this deep, dark hole known as Moses' tomb. Is it Moses or Moses? Moses. So what we call eating the rope. Yeah, the pit just ate it, ate that rope. All right, so Jason's gonna get ready to rig his rack in so he can rappel down the rope. You always wanna clip in for safety. Basically, he's going to feed that rope through the bars on the rack. <clears throat> 
Always double check everything. Probably mine. <laughs> it looks like yours. Oh. So now he's going to take his safety off. He's sitting on some rocks right there. It weighs pretty good. It feels like a deep pit. Okay. See you at the bottom. All right, I'm gonna drop a bar. Not sure how quick this rope's gonna be. And there he goes, disappearing into the darkness. Again, this pit's 230 feet deep, straight down. So when he gets to the bottom, he's going to yell, so I can hear him, he'll yell off rope. And then that way I will know that he is safely off the rope and out of the fall zone at the bottom. And then I can get on rope and join him in the bottom. Okay! So he just gave me the all clear. He's off rope. So I'm going to put this camera away and join him down there in the bottom. Kelly, she's about four, 30 feet off the ground, 40 feet. She's definitely not spinning as much as I was. Here I am on the bottom of the pit, joined back up with Jason. And let's see, all the way up there, you can just barely see a little bit of light from the entrance. So we're down here in the bottom and there is no cave passage. So it's just a pit, uh, we call that a blind pit. And cavers like to do what we call pit bounce. So we are just came down here today for the joy of it. And we're going to climb back out. But I just wanted to show you around down here a little bit. I just noticed there's some animal bones right there. So it's pretty easy. Something like a, a raccoon or a possum would fall down into this pit. Sometimes you'll see rats and things like this. There's a little bit of formations down here. A lot of what we call cave popcorn. Some really cool flowstone as well that goes all the way up the pit. Oh, somebody made a little. Oh yeah, looky there. Somebody made a little snowman while they were probably waiting on other cavers to climb this pit. There's a lot of debris down here, sticks and things like that that have fallen in over the years. Of course, lots of leaves. Looks like some water dripped there for a very long time into that mud. Over here in this little corner, looks like some water flows this way, but it's a dead end. Survey station, where the cave was surveyed a few years ago again. Lots of cave crickets in here, too. All right, so we're going to get ready to start climbing out. On road! Let's 
So I'm actually climbing this pit in what's called a rope walker system. So I've got multiple ascenders. I've got one on each leg, and then I've got this chest box that the rope is gonna go through to keep me straight up. And then I'll have my upper ascender above it. So let's get rid of it. You always start with a rope walker, you rig in from the bottom up. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and rig in my crawl, because I've got two climbing systems on today. A lot of people like to call this a frog walker because I have two climbing systems on. And when I get to the lip of the pit, I'm gonna ditch the rope walker and just use the frog system to climb out over the lip of the pit. So we're ready to get going, double check everything. So I've climbed up about 30 feet and Jason's going to get on the rope below me. We're going to do what's called tandem climbing. So Jason is getting on rope down below me and he's going to climb up here to me and then we'll take turns climbing in increments of about 30 feet. So I just climbed up about 20 feet and now Jason's going to climb up below me. And we're going to go all the way up there. So check out this beautiful flow stone. It's a huge flow stone. I don't know, probably 80 foot tall. Shit. Pretty much goes down the whole pit. There's a lot of there's a lot of this flowstone up towards the top too. All right, so here we go. I'm going to climb up a little more. Let's turn some light on. It's pretty dark in here. Pretty warm, very humid. Hey, look down. Let's see if we can. How far off the ground do you think we are? 60. 60. Oh, I feel like it's more than that. There's that beautiful flowstone. It's a little bouncy when you're tandem climbing with somebody. <sighs> oh, you're gonna get all the way up here on me.
We're getting closer to the top. Look at all these gorgeous flowstone. You can't really see all this from the bottom, but you can definitely get a view of it when you're climbing. There's the top of that flowstone bale. All those scars you see on it are where people over the years have thrown rocks into this pit. And they come tumbling down and they hit it. There's some really beautiful flowstone right here, and this big bale, and then there's the entrance up there. Not much further, and we'll be out of here. Every time I look down at you, you make that noise on video. Deep, dark hole behind you there, Jason. Yep. We're getting close to the top up here. All right, so there's the entrance. And this is pretty cool. You can actually see where the rope rubs here. It's not a rough spot, but it's pretty cool. You can see Caber's been doing this so long, it's rubbed these nice little grooves in the, in the rock for the rope. But we're almost out. Sit still. So I got past that part, and now Jason's gonna come up. There's the entrance right up there. We're about 20 feet away from that pigtail. There's a deep hole behind me. Mm -hmm. About 200 feet deep below you there. Barely see the bottom. All right, so I've switched over to the pigtail rope and Jason's gonna go ahead and finish climbing out and then I'm gonna climb out after him. Oh, it's not raining. Right in the loop. Get all that wonderful rock above our head. No worries. It's been there for a long, long time. <clears throat> Chest boxes are tight. Chest boxes. Okay. Give me just a second. Sure. Just hanging out here I want to get over this with my crawl and my handle descender. That's how I am on this rope. Is this piece of equipment right here? All right. So he's off rope, and I'm gonna finish climbing out. Come on up.
this is going to be too graceful. <sighs> There you go. It's a girl. <laughs> Man, mine's so wide angle this video. So there you have it folks. We just did what we call a pit bounce here of this pit here in Alabama. Again, it's about 230 feet deep. We are very experienced cavers. We have been doing this for about 20 years. So like and follow my page for more caving content and outdoor activity here in the heart of TAG, which is short for Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia. It's called the inline figure eight. So now we're going to pull the rope and we're going to coil it and then hike off the mountain. Here comes the end of the rope. Get this coil tied up. Get our gear packed away. Show us your little trick there, Jason, to hold the end of the rope there. Make your coil all nice and neat. Tell them my trick. I'm not telling your tricks, you're telling your tricks. Look at that beautiful rope. Well, I would help you, but... It's okay. It's like you got it. <laughs> I believe in rope chivalry. Oh, well then you should be carrying it, right? Chivalry? No. It's not that bad. How much do you think it weighs extra? 20 pounds. It's just awkward. Yeah. We're down the mountain and back at the truck. We're gonna put our gear away and maybe take the drone up for a minute, give you guys a aerial view of this uh, area in this cove. <laughs> 